Hey folks, for this screencast, I'm going to talk about something that I've been working on the last few days, and I went ahead and put the equations in my uh, my free aerospace, aerospace mechanics textbook here. So if you run over my GitHub, Cementalva 251, and you go to my LaTeX repo, and you go to uh, aerospace mechanics, I've got my entire textbook here. I even threw the tech file in there in case you want to, and even the figures if you want to, you know, use them. Just make sure to give me credit for it uh, for wherever you want, you know, reference this repo. Um, if you click this link, you can just download the PDF itself, but I, I obviously have the, the raw PDF downloaded and you can see like I just updated this recently. So what I want to talk about, what I've been working on is I've been beefing up the uh, Euler angle parameterization. So one of the things that we do in, in aerospace uh, convention is we talk about the 3 two, one sequence. And so that's where, you know, you have, I'm going to use this as an airplane. Um, it's a little uh, small camera. And basically you do a, a rotation about the z-axis, that's your yaw angle, and so that's why there's some cosine size and sine size. And this is a three-dimensional transformation. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to really go into the detail of this thing. Uh, anybody with uh, you know, some rudimentary uh, undergraduate dynamics, uh, 3D dynamics, you know, you'll, you'll have seen that. And so I recommend looking through somewhere else. I just have these equations there for reference. But you basically have your, your yaw axis about the z, and that's where the three comes in, that's the third axis. And then the second rotation is a, a pitch through theta about the y axis, that's the two rotation. And then you finally have a um, rotation through roll or phi about the uh, x axis, which is the one. So that's a three, two, one rotation. And you can kind of see this graphic here, which basically shows, let me move this out of the way, which shows this projectile moving about the z-axis through psi, and then about the intermediate axis through theta, and then uh, about the final axis through roll. And you can do some matrix multiplication and you can multiply this out and you can get this really, really large uh, equation here uh, that basically rotates the body to the inertial frame. And I did another video a while ago about you know the uh, AHRS filter, which basically takes your IMU measurements and estimates the quaternions based on your accelerometer, gyro, and your magnetometer. Now, one of the things that I was realizing is that that, that is a fairly complex algorithm. And sometimes, you know, you might create a drone that can't move through, you know, 90 degrees, which creates that, you know, gimbal lock or singularity at pi over two. And so you might want to just get roll and pitch directly from an IMU. And so I've put together this chapter here on guidance, navigation, and controls, and I've talked a little bit about state estimation, and I talk about the eternal, in the inertial measurement unit, the IMU, which has a, a magnetometer, a, a rate gyro, and then also an accelerometer. And so I also talk about the GPS, which you know the GPS and the IMU put together gives you an INS, an inertial navigation system. And then I go on to talk about, is it possible to get Euler angles from directly from your IMU rather than using this complex AHRS filter? And it turns out it is. And so what, you, and what I want to do in this video is go through the, just the derivation of it. And then in a separate video, I'm going to talk about, um, I'm actually going to use some real sensors and, and push, plug these equations in so you can see it actually work on the, on the fly. So let's talk about the direct measurement of roll and pitch. So the idea is, and let me grab a, uh, I, have a I have a small microcontroller in here with a, uh, let me see, small, I have a small microcontroller over here that has an accelerometer. I'm going to use this in a separate video. So these are the circuit playground expresses that we, that I use in my instrumentation class. And so basically the accelerometer, the z-axis is, is this way. And so if I hold the accelerometer like this, where gravity is pointing down, what I can, what the math I'm basically going to realize is that my gravity vector is 9.8, and as long as I'm not shaking this thing around, as long as the uh, circuit python is, is is steady, not level, but steady, I should be reading the gravity vector straight down. And so that's basically what this is: the gravity vector in the inertial frame is 0, 0 g. And if I normalize that, the gravity vector is zero, zero, one, right? So that's basically all of, all of the acceleration that the accelerometer is reading should be in the z-axis. Now, the accelerometer is going to give me ax, ay, and az. It's going to give me an accelerometer measurement in the three axes of the body frame of the, of, the, of the sensor. And what I can do is I can normalize that here. And so if I take, you know, the accelerometer measurement here, can you see that on there? Let's see. Let me move this out of the way. So if I take my accelerometer measurement right here, 
and divide it by the norm, you know, I'll get a normalized acceleration vector here I call A bar. And so what you can understand is that my gravity vector is always pointing down and if I rotate about the yaw axis, you'll notice that that doesn't change the gravity vector in the body frame. And so what that means is, is that that psi rotation, that yaw rotation, that third rotation does not affect my gravity vector that I'm measuring. But if I rotate about the y-axis or rotate about the x-axis, if I rotate about either axes, what happens is, is that the gravity vector is now along different axes. And so if I, if I pitch up and roll, my gravity vector is still down, but my three components, my x, y, and z in the accelerometer frame are now different. And what you can, you can do that very easily. What you can do is you can take the gravity vector that you're supposed to be measuring. Again, I said the, the sensor needs to be steady. It doesn't need to be level, but it needs to be steady because you need to assume that you're measuring gravity. I can rot this, rotate this through the uh, pitch transformation matrix. And if you scroll up back to the Euler angle um, section, this is a 2D transformation matrix through theta, the pitch angle. And then this is a transformation matrix through roll. And what you end up getting is this pretty simple equation with you know, sines, thetas, sine, phi's, cosine, thetas. And you can look at the top equation and you can see that that equation is one equation with one unknown. And so you can take the accelerometer measurement in the x-axis or the normalized acceleration in the x-axis and do an inverse sine and take the negative component. And that gives you theta. And then what you can do furthermore is you can take this second equation and this third equation and you can divide the two and you'll notice that the cosine thetas will cancel now this is where that gimbal lock comes in if cosine of theta is zero it means your sensor is like this and that means that you can't get the roll angle because what's happening is is your gravity vector is now straight down along the x-axis and if i rotate or roll the vehicle or roll the sensor it won't change my measurement and so this, these equations are only valid for benign maneuvers. So this would work well on a, on a ship, um, on a quadcopter that doesn't flip. Uh, it would definitely not work on a rocket or a spacecraft. So you have to keep that in mind when you're, when you're using these equations. So uh, as I was saying, if you, if you divide these two equations, the cosine of theta will cancel and you'll basically get a, ta a tangent of, of phi, the roll angle. And so on the left-hand side, that's the normalized component in the y-axis and the normalized component in the z-axis. You divide those two, take the inverse tan, and that will give you the roll angle. So that is how you can get a direct measurement of the roll angle and the pitch angle just from an accelerometer. And as I said, before, as I said uh, later on, I'm, I'm going to uh, actually put those equations on this circuit playground and post that in a separate video. What I wanted to do is I wanted to, to go on and, and, and move further, and there's some other equations and supplemental stuff, is talking about measuring yaw using a magnetometer. Now this sensor, unfortunately, the circuit playground does not have a magnetometer, so I am going to have to attach a separate uh, magnetometer sensor to it. But the idea for measuring yaw is exactly the same. You assume that, and this isn't true, but you assume that the magnetic field vector is pointing north, if you're in the northern hemisphere and essentially along the x-axis and if you normalize it you'll get a vector that's one zero zero then what you do is you understand that the that vector as i yaw the vehicle like this is basically and let me see if i can if i can put this so that's north as i rotate the circuit playground or the sensor left and right that's like yawing the vehicle right moving this way i'll get a cosine and a sine component depending on which way I'm going. And so we can do the same thing where we can take the uh, measurement of the magnetometer in the body frame and rotate that through the roll angle and rotate that through the pitch angle and equate that, set that equal to the magnetic field of the earth that we think it's supposed to be uh, through this psi angle. And you can see that I can take this first row and this second row, and I can divide those and get a tangent component. And I end up getting this pretty long equation here. Now I've actually used this equation before um, on a rocket and it, it did okay, um, but it is, the magnetometer is very sensitive to calibration errors and you know magnetic interference. So if you put a magnetometer near some rotating propellers, 
you're going to get some magnetic interference there. And so I've seen this equation numerous times, like on GitHub for, and like on Adafruit or on DigiKey or there's another DFR robot. You know, everybody uses this similar equation and I basically just go through here and kind of derive it. Um, and hopefully you can follow along and, and see if that helps. Um, I also, just a, a plug in here, I also have a, a chapter here on how to get attitude estimation in low Earth orbit, and you can read that through at your leisure. Um, there's also some spacecraft position estimation using some ground station networks. And then finally, the last thing that I want to do, and I'm going to post another video on this, is about uh, heading angle estimation using uh, GPS. So you can get the heading angle of the sensor just by it rotating and use the magnetic field as your reference. But sometimes it's beneficial to say that, you know, hey, if I have a vehicle that's just moving forward through space, what I can do is I can basically fit a line between every successive GPS point. And so what I can do is I can take a GPS coordinate and then a, fo a, a following GPS coordinate and subtract the two and get a delta and say that is my heading angle. In order to do that, what you need to do first is take your GPS coordinates, your latitude, longitude, and altitude, and convert it to the Cartesian plane. And that, uh, that equation, I'm going to go back up to the table of contents, external models, uh, GPS coordinates to Cartesian, is uh, this, this equation here, where you take the, the latitude of your measurement minus your origin point. So you have to assume an origin point for your, basically your Cartesian flat earth model. And then you multiply by this, this kappa. And this kappa is converting a degree of latitude or longitude into nautical miles and then meters to feet. And I'm not sure if you know this, but um, one degree of latitude is 60 nautical miles on the surface. And so that's where this, uh, this, this 60 comes in. So you can see that here, 60, that kappa is 60 times feet over nautical miles, which uh, is, let me see if you can scroll over to that, is uh, 6,700, you can't see that, hang on, let me zoom in, there you go, is that 6,076, uh, 6, and then the meters to feet obviously is the 0 0.3048. And so what you can do is you can take that delta latitude, let me move my mouse out of the way, you can take that delta latitude and multiply it by cap, and that will give you an x coordinate. And remember, latitude is, is, is north to south. Um, and then your longitude, you, you do your longitude, and you also, you sorry, you do your delta longitude, and you, you multiply by that kappa to get to meters, or, or feet in this case. Um, but you have to take into account the fact that as you go up in latitude, you move across longitude more quickly. And so if your latitude is zero, then you're basically going around the equator. But if you're higher up on the poles, if your, lo your longitude will change quicker, and so therefore you have to take that into account when you do your X and Y calculation. And then Z is this height above the surface, so that's your, your altitude. So if you, if you do that conversion where you go from your latitude, longitude, altitude, and you convert it to your Cartesian plane, you can then, and let me see, heading angle estimation, you can then take deltas based on your successive measurements. And you basically do a dx over a dt, and that will give you your velocity in the x direction. And then you do a, a, a y, a i plus 1 minus yi. yi plus 1 is your measurement uh, before, sorry, yi plus 1 is your successive measurement, and then yi is your previous measurement. You take that delta, and that gives you a delta y. Divide that by delta t, and that gives you a vy. And then your heading is just the tangent inverse of your VX and your VY. Now you'll notice, by the way, that when you do VX over V, or sorry, VY over VX, you'll notice that the delta T cancels. So you could just do uh, DY over DX and do a tan inverse, and that will give you your heading. Now keep in mind, this only works if you're moving, right? So if you're moving in a certain direction, as you're moving in that direction, you can get your heading. But if you stop in place, that's really where the magnetometer uh, sort of shines. The other uh, thing that you can keep in mind is that your magnetometer is going to be prone to a lot of those uh, biases and things like that. And so sometimes it's nice to fuse the measurement of the magnetometer and the uh, heading together. Or, you know, use the magnetometer when you're not moving and then the heading angle, or sorry, the GPS measurement heading angle when you're moving. And then not to mention, the IMU is going to update at like 10, 100, 1000 hertz. 
and your GPS is only going to update, you know, every four, every two, three, four seconds. Uh, so there's also that to keep in mind. Um, so anyway, hopefully this was an interesting video about you know, different ways to get your Euler angles from, uh, from these measurements. And then there was a, an entirely one more method where I didn't even mention, which is taking your rate gyro and integrating your rate gyro. You know, obviously integrating your rate gyro, you're going to end up integrating your biases, and, but that will also give you Euler angles if you have a really nice rate gyro. And then that AHRS filter, that attitude uh, heading reference system filter that I talked about earlier, which estimated quaternions, that's basically a combination of all the two. You have the accelerometer that, me that measures your gravity vector. You integrate your gyro and you fuse the two, but it didn't include the GPS, which is why I wanted to talk about that here. So uh, this is what I've been working on. I'm putting this into my, my fast kit uh, tool, tool set. So if you go back over to my repos over here and, and you go over to, let's see, uh, more repos, more, yeah, my repositories, and you go over to FastKit, this is my autopilot software that I've been working on. Um, I've been integrating, uh, you know, GPS heading, you can see my latest commit, GPS heading, speed, and magnetometer yaw angle. I've been putting that in there. And so future videos, expect to see some stuff where I, uh, I test all this. And like I said, I'm going to do a, a follow-up video where I, I use that circuit playground and I, and I move the, the circuit playground around and get a roll and pitch. So hope you uh, enjoy those future videos and see you in the next one.